Right. And I said, wait a minute. And then I heard the Lord's voice speak to me while I was standing there because he was dealing with me about some stuff. Yeah. He said, what if Lucifer thought that to be promoted from worship was more important than his assignment of worship. And I went, ooh. What if Lucifer thought to be promoted from worship, come on, amen, was something that was to be gained, some high place or position. And the Lord said to me, he said, she doesn't realize what she said to you, I allowed her to say it in that way so you could see how important your role is in the church of taking people into worship. Yeah, right. Because sometimes people position, you know, I, I would go places and minister, and every time I would go places and minister, people would never want to hear me preach the word. They just wanted me to worship. And then I would get bothered because they would actually try to shape my worship. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. I'm going to give it a second. Well, we'll do it like this. Yeah. Can you imagine how that could feel? Yeah. You're, you're a worship leader, and every time you get ready to worship, the way God puts it in you, they say, well, we'd like you to do it this way. Yeah. Because it's more entertaining. Mm. <laughs> or it's more, it's going to help the people to enter in more because they like that. How many know that we're not here to entertain people? Amen. Amen. I'm his priest first. Come on, Come on somebody, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so I had to I had to get over that. I had to just start saying, you know what? I'm not going to allow that to happen to me, but I'm not going to allow that to stop me from worshiping. Come on. Come on, amen. Because the enemy was trying to use it to stop me from worshiping. Yeah. Trying to shut me down. Yeah. See, you know. And then when you're a worship leader, and then you get all these people around you who can sing better than you. <laughs> and they can play better than you. How many get what I'm saying? So then you have another crisis. Because then you got to try to be something. Come on, amen. Else, because the people around you, they're doing it all better than you. And then the Lord started showing me, said, it's not about any of that. It's about obedience to my voice. Come on, somebody, amen. Hallelujah. I started getting the revelation. I said, okay, God, I'm seeing this. Mm. Do you know that God will promote you if your voice don't sound that good? <laughs> Come on, amen. Because he's not looking for the, the, the eloquence of your voice or your speech or your singing abilities. He's actually looking for your heart. Yes. Yes. Amen. He's looking for your heart. Some of the most anointed people don't have that great of a voice. But they're very anointed. And they can hold a tune, they can flow, but they're not that, you know. But the anointing of God is just tremendous upon them to bring breakthrough. I found out some of the people who can sing the best are some of the most arrogant, prideful, come on, amen, fleshly people, come on, you want to deal with. And then you wonder why God, they, they wonder why, why they don't, they, they get promoted, but they're not, they, they don't have the anointing. And they wonder why the anointing is not there. See, I want the anointing more than I want to sound good. I want to sound good too. That's good. It's good to sound good. It's good to practice. It's good to develop your skills. That's good to do that. But I want, come on, amen, to do more than just come on, sound good and be professional and be eloquent at what I do. I want the anointing to be upon me. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. I want the anointing. And so this fits in every sphere of ministry. Yeah. You want to have the anointing. What everything you do, you want it to be the anointing. But it starts with that sustained fire of yes. intimate worship with God. Yes. Being called away into the presence of the Lord. Yes. God is calling the church into that intimate place. Yes. Amen with him. The burning of his spirit inside of us. Yes. So the Lord began to talk to me about this. And I want to I want to show you something else. We'll see how the Lord directs me tonight. Amen. If I'm going to be more prophetically or not, we'll see. What he does. Praise the Lord. Amen. Go in your Bible to Psalms 27. And what I'm sharing is very simple tonight. There's nothing, come on, amen, you know, deep. Come on, amen. It's just, come on, amen. Simple. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Now, if you look at Psalm 27, 
And in verse 4, one thing have I desired of the Lord. That will I seek after. That I may dwell in the what? House of the Lord all the days of my life. And to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. So that's one thing he's looking for. Then I heard in that verse 5, For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. And now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies, around about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifice of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. The Lord said there's protection for worshipers. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. There's protection for worshipers. There's protection for those who are learning how to focus on the one thing, which is Him first. Come on, amen. I went, amen, praise the Lord. I went to uh, India, and uh, they were running around with their cell phones, you know, the Indian people, you know, they were you know, just chattering on their phones, and the, the, the nationals or the pastors, the leaders, they were walking around on their phones in the service and moving around. I said, what is going on here? <laughs> and the Lord spoke to me, he says, uh, I want you to preach on getting into my presence. Come on, somebody, amen. amen. And, and God started showing me, because as I started teaching on this topic, it arrested the entire atmosphere. And all of a sudden, these ministers all begin to, they begin, some of them begin to cry. The Spirit of God begin to come up on people. And they also begin, come on, to start wanting the service to go on more and more. They, they stopped and they started getting focused and they start, they start telling the leader, I said, can we go on longer? Can we go on longer? Because when I started talking about getting into the presence of the Lord, then the atmosphere opened up. Because they were not in the presence. Come on, somebody, they were not in the presence of God. It was just busy, 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 yeah. talking, communicating, yeah. interacting. And I'm know many of us are so busy, we don't have no time to spend with God. Yeah. And it's a dangerous thing when you're that busy that you don't have time to spend with God because you can't develop intimacy with Him. Yeah. Intimacy is not just having knowledge and information of Scripture. Well, come on. Revelation does not make you intimate with God. Revelation come on, comes from being spent time in the presence of the Lord. But you can hear somebody preach a revelation and it's secondhand revelation because it's coming to you from them. But you ain't got no revelation because you ain't spent no time in the presence of the Lord. Come on, somebody, amen. That's why people are fascinated with certain types of teachers and preachers. And they're fascinated, but they don't have no relationship. And so worship is imperative for the church today if we're going to walk as a body that walks in the, and embodies the fullness of God in the last days. Yes, oh my God, I'm preaching right now. Because listen, do you realize that COVID is nothing compared to what the devil is about to do? Amen. And if the church is not developed and cultivated properly and spiritually, if we don't let become engaged with God, if we keep depending upon our preachers and our pastors and our leaders and we don't become engaged with God, come on, amen, it's going to cost us, come on, amen, things. And then we wonder why am I going through this? God, I thought you said this, I thought you said that. Because it's not, come on, it's in your head and not in your spirit. Come on, somebody, amen. God wants that intimacy with him. You know, I didn't know what I was going to preach on today, but praise the Lord. This is a good word. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. So when you get in the presence, it starts changing your it starts changing your 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 uh, uh your spirit. It starts changing your spirit. It starts changing your mind. It starts changing the way you think. It starts changing the way you function. Come on, amen. Yeah. Being in the presence of the Lord, not just in a corporate worship service, but privately, I'm spending time with God. It starts changing me. Come on, hallelujah. You know why a lot of people, uh, COVID revealed where a lot of people were at spiritually. I'm telling you, it revealed. It revealed their, 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 their level of intimacy with God, their faith, their confidence. Everything, it just came out. There are some people that have still not returned to church. Come on, amen. They are still watching online. Come on, amen. Hallelujah. 
like, ah, you know, it was, you know, it was all, it was, you know, it was okay when I was there. It was okay. Call him out. <laughs> but, but, see, but, if you're, but if you're in the spirit and you have intimacy with God, you're going to have this desire to yes, be with the Lord. Yes. Yes. You're going to have this, you have this thing you're craving with me. i got to get among the believers. Yes. i got to fellowship yes. with them. Because the nature in me won't let me stay disconnected from them. Oh. I can stay away from my wife only so long. Yeah. Then I'm going to start feeling that. Like, man, I need to be with my wife. I need to be around her. Come on, amen. I need to be in her presence. See, what? Because, see, there's a grace. Come on, amen, for you to do things. But you still need to realize intimacy requires you to spend time with God. Yes. Worship requires you to spend. you got to be spending time with God. If the miracles are going to break loose in the days to come, the church has to be on the same page. Amen. Because what we've done is we've depended upon men and women of God to display the power of God. And God's not moving like that anymore. That's why we got all this weird prophecy stuff going on. Come on, amen. It's so contaminated now. You know, last night I was preaching on um, prophecy last night, on prophecy last night. And it was powerful. God really spoke, amen, during that service. Yeah. But God was showing me like this, like the spirit of divination in familiar spirits. Mm -hmm. And how they're working. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the things is, is that when you're not intimate with God, you can't discern. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. If you're not spending time with God, you can't discern when a spirit of a familiar spirit is talking. Yeah. You might even have the letter of the word, and you might know what certain things are, but if you don't have that intimacy, you won't have that inner knowing, man, that's a deceiving spirit that's talking to you. Demons will tell you stuff, they'll even use scripture. The devil knows scripture. Come on, y'all. The devil knows scripture. You need to know God. You need to have an intimate relation with the Lord. But I talked about familiar spirits and how they trade information. Yeah. They trade information to gain different parts, controls of your control of your life, wow, right. uh, different parts of your life. They want to control it, so they trade information to do that. Mm -hmm. The spirit operating with the person, come on, amen. Mm -hmm. That same spirit will communicate with the spirit that's operating with you. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. Bro. You know, let me let me show you something. I, I got another book that I wrote called Utterances, and I, I share how I went. Uh, to see the movie The Black Panther. Uh -huh. And I was like, you know, I was with my my boys, you know, they, hey, let's go see The Black Panther. I said, okay, I'll go with you guys. I'll hang out with y'all, you know. He, you know, it's the first black superhero, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know go check it out, you know what I'm saying? So I, I'm, I'm going there to check it out. And I'm seeing through the movie, everything is pretty good. It's action packed, there's all this stuff happening, right? Wakanda, right? You know, I'm, I'm just, you know. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, uh, he dies. Yes. And then he's talking to his dad. Uh -huh. yep. And and he's interacting with his dad or whatever. And I'm thinking, oh, you know, I, I don't believe in that. But, you know, it's just a movie, you know. <laughs> just a movie. So I said, okay, I, I left alone. I left out the movie and went home and went to sleep and had a dream. Mm -hmm. My dad came in my dream. Mm -hmm. And I went, oh, man. And he started talking to me, talking to me about my mom and my mom was there and they were, you know, crying and, mm -hmm. you know, there was healing and, you know, all these things happening between them and in the dream. And I'm sitting there going, wow, this is such a powerful experience, you know, in this dream. Like, wow, it's, it's so emotional, so touching. So I wake up out of this dream like, man, it's a strange dream. I felt kind of weird. Come on in, man. But it was really good. You know, it felt good. You know, it felt good. And then I called my sister up and I was talking to my sister. I said, you know. Uh, I had this dream, da 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 da. She says, Karata Boko <laughs> I, I said, What is it? She said, Calvin, you don't see it. I said, What? I said, Wait a minute. Oh my God, I see it. It's a familiar spirit. Yeah. Well, how did it come in? Watching the Black Panther. Mm, wow. See, what he wanted me to do, it wanted me to hear from my ancestors mm -hmm. instead of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Oh, yeah. 
And the Lord was showing me, when you're intimate, see, you, you pick up stuff in the spirit. I knew something was right, but I just couldn't put my finger on it. So I shared it with her, and then she confirmed, you're here, you're, you're getting something, you're, you're picking it up. Yeah. Wow. Many times we don't realize that there's a demonic strategy that's working even through the movie industry. Yeah. There are evil spirits working and they're transmitting information to your spirit yes. through through these uh, movies. A lot of these people are just, come on, amen, just messed up. Yeah. Uh, I, I saw another movie. Somebody said, well, here is the movie. <laughs> amen. How many watch movies in here? Yeah. All right, so I don't, so I'm not the only one, right? So Y'all keep making me feel bad. I watch the movie. Anyway, I watched this movie called The King's Speech. How many yeah. seen that movie? Mm -hmm. Isn't that a good movie, right? That's a good movie, right? Okay, so I'm watching this movie, right? And I watched the movie, and the man, uh, and the man was uh, at one point during the movie that the the, the uh, tutor who was teaching the king how to speak said, "Just let it out." Just learn how to just let it out. Whatever you want to say. Because he was having a speech problem. He couldn't communicate properly as a king. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to teach him how to talk, how to communicate. So this man lets out this barrage of curse words. Yeah. <laughs>